Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we're going to examine some hypothetical troubleshooting scenarios using the manual motor starter circuit we created in a prior applications exercise. Keep in mind, there is no limit to the wrong that can happen. Problems manifest themselves in many numbers and in many forms, and sometimes the same external symptom can be rooted in very different sources. This being said, I like to discuss and intentionally induce some common faults in the manual motor starter circuit for the purposes of familiarizing you with the observed results. If at a later date you observe these same fault conditions, you'll at least have the luxury of having seen it once before. Before we begin, let me remind you I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules. Follow the code. It's there for a reason to protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. Let us begin. Recall we installed a manual motor starter on our motor controls trainer board in our last application's exercise. The manual motor starter not only serves to make or break connection to a motor, but also protect the motor from sustained overload conditions. In this case, the control transformer is not utilized for this exercise, so we'll go ahead and delete it from our schematic. Recall that a hardwired manual motor starter fixes direction of rotation. If you are called in to troubleshoot a scenario in which a manual motor starter rotates the motor in the opposite of the desired direction, you need not spend more than a second in diagnosing the problem. The manual motor starter, motor, or some other circuit element has been improperly wired with the incorrect phase sequence. To reverse the direction of rotation, a technician must lock out and tag out the system, swap any two hardwired phase connections, and return the system to service. Too easy. Let's now examine a manual motor starter that frequently overloads. First, you must understand one of the principal tasks of a motor starter is to protect a motor from sustained overload conditions. The overload event is simply a motor starter doing its job. A technician presented with a manual motor starter that frequently overloads must treat the scenario as an investigation into the source of the overload. Very often, the answer is quite simple and obvious. The motor is overloaded. If a 200 watt motor is assigned a 300 watt task, the manual motor starter will overload. If a motor receives insufficient ventilation, the manual motor starter will overload. If the motor is covered in a thick coating of sawdust, the manual motor starter will overload. If the motor is regularly locked in a black box on the roof of a metal smelter midsummer, the motor will overload. Long story short, if you are regularly using a motor improperly, the manual motor starter will regularly overload. That's the point of the motor starter. The manual motor starter not only serves to make or break connection to a motor, but also protect the motor from sustained overload conditions. The solution to all these frequent overload scenarios is to simply stop overloading the motor. This reminds me of a recent conversation I had with your lazy lab partner. If you want to pass this class, stop failing it. If the motor is undersized for the task, Get a bigger motor or redesign the system such that the demand is smaller. If the environment is too extreme for the motor, consider conditioning the environment or relocating the motor such that the motor runs cooler. Sometimes low-level maintenance tasks include cleaning the motor or enclosure from any accumulated dust. If the motor starter has worked well up to this point and suddenly experiences a rash of overloads, consider broken mechanical linkages, misaligned shafts, damaged bearings, broken or improperly oiled gearboxes, or otherwise poorly maintained systems. In summary, the motor starter is overloading because the motor starter is overloaded. Although the symptom is a sustained electrical overload, the source is mechanical or thermal in nature. Related to this phenomenon is the overload setting. Most manual motor starters include adjustable overload settings. I'd like to say this is a rarity, but all too often technicians unversed in critical thinking replace perfectly functional components in properly connected systems that simply have the wrong settings. If a manual motor starter is intended to enter overload conditions in excess of let's say 1.6 amps, when the overload setting is set to 1 amp, 
don't be surprised if the manual motor starter overloads frequently. Do not for a moment assume that someone isn't diddling with the dials in your absence. This is why motor control devices are often housed in rugged locking metal enclosures. Not only do the locking enclosures prevent untrained personnel from electrical hazards, it also prevents untrained personnel, under the false impression that they are trained personnel, from dorking things up. In regards to a motor that truly is being overloaded due to some excess task, do not for a moment thinking that increasing the overload setting above the value as recommended by the process or governing code is an acceptable solution to this problem. The higher overload setting will simply allow more current for a longer time period and runs the risk of eventually damaging the motor and the very real possibility of burning the whole place down. Again, the utility of locking enclosures is immediately recognizable. Only authorized and trained personnel should be allowed to modify settings. In summary, check to make sure the adjustable overload value is set properly before you do anything else. Too low, the manual motor starter will overload frequently. Too high, you'll damage the motor. An event associated with overloads is caused by a phenomenon known as single phasing. A single phasing event is one in which one phase of a balanced three-phase AC system is lost. Lectures on three-phase AC circuit analysis, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, cover this phenomenon in greater numerical detail. However, for the purposes of this lecture, we can summarize single phasing as a loss of balance using this analogy. Consider three horses pushing or pulling a load with equal force, yet in three different directions offset by 120 degrees. The end result is a balanced system. If, however, one horse leaves or exerts significantly less force than the other two, the balance condition is upset and things go downhill in a hurry. Single phasing results in the loss phase supplying no current, yet the two remaining phases supply more. More current means the motor overloads quicker. Single phasing can manifest itself at two different times, when a motor is at standstill and prior to starting it, and while the motor is running. If a three-phase AC system has lost a phase prior to starting a motor at standstill, the motor will not start because the rotating magnetic field characteristic of a three-phase AC system is not properly established. Given locked rotor conditions and an imbalanced three-phase AC system, line current in the remaining two phases spikes and the motor quickly enters overload conditions. A motor at standstill started with only two phases of a three-phase AC system exhibits a characteristic growl that once you've heard it is very hard to forget. Warning, do not try this at home. There are additional circuit protection elements in play. Here's a manual motor starter that I've intentionally disconnected phase L2 between the manual motor starter and the motor. When I close the manual motor starter, the rotor doesn't turn. If you're too dense to know something's wrong, the overload quickly steps in to break it up by opening the manual motor starter. Only the densest of operators would try to start the motor again after observing such an event. However, they do exist and they all work at the same company you do. Note the manual motor starter is trip free and that it cannot be reset or held in the closed position while the overload elements are still hot. Only when the overload elements have been given a chance to cool will the manual motor starter reset. Single phasing can also occur while a motor is running. Given the motor is not in locked rotor conditions, the motor would continue to rotate, but does so like a car missing a wheel, i.e. erratically and not well. Given an imbalanced three-phase AC system, line current in the remaining phases spikes and the motor enters overload conditions. A running motor, while being single-phased, exhibits a characteristic mix of a growl and crackling sound that once you've heard it, is hard to forget. Warning, do not try this at home. There are additional circuit protection elements in play. Here's a manual motor starter that I've intentionally included a switch on the phase L2 between the manual motor starter and the motor. Note when the switch is closed and the motor started with all three phases, it does so as previously and continues to rotate as we'd expect. If however I open the switch, the running motor starts wigging out. If you're too dense to know something is wrong, the overload quickly steps in to break it up by opening the manual motor starter. 
open operator allowed the overloads to cool and tried to restart the motor, the single phase motor at a standstill would not start and again enter an overload condition. Troubleshooting a single phased manual motor starter is the easiest of tasks. Given the sound and overload event clue you in onto the source, all you've got to do is determine which of the three phases is lost and then track down the open. The easiest and most non-invasive way to determine which phase is lost is to use an amp clamp or take voltage checks. Here's an amp clamp being used to measure line current of a properly running three-phase AC motor. Note they're all relatively equal because the system is balanced. Now, here's an amp clamp being used to measure line current of a three-phase AC motor that's been single-phased while running. Note current in L1 and L3 are too high and L2 is carrying no current. Phase L2 is obviously the source of our problem. Here's an amp clamp being used to measure line current of a three-phase AC motor that's been single-phased while at a standstill. Note current in L1 and L2 are way too high, and L2 is carrying no current. Again, phase L2 is obviously the source of our problem. A DMM and AC voltmeter mode can also be used to identify and track down the source of the open. Most likely, the open is a result of a single blown fuse in a three-pole fuse holder or some other wire that's come loose. In this scenario, we'd expect to find an open in the wire between the manual motor starter and the motor. Lock it out, tag it out, and trace down the open by performing continuity checks with your DMM and ohmmeter mode. Although not as extreme as complete loss of a single phase, consider a slightly imbalanced three-phase AC system where the magnitude of one phase, as perceived by the motor, is different than the other two due to a poor connection. In this scenario, there would be a voltage drop across the poor connection as if a series resistor was included in the circuit. Imbalance occurs, however it's not as significant as complete loss of a single phase. Depending on the magnitude and duration, this scenario too may result in an eventual overload. Again, ammeter, voltmeter, and ohmmeter checks would identify which phase is suspect or where exactly the poor connection exists. All right, that's about it. Again, keep in mind there is no limit to the wrong that can happen. My intention in creating this resource was to introduce and familiarize you with a couple common troubleshooting scenarios you can put in your pocket and whip out at a later date. Remember, troubleshooting is not a skill separate from a thorough understanding of basic technical principles, but rather troubleshooting is the systematic and efficient application of basic technical principles. The first step to troubleshooting any system, no matter how complicated, is to understand how it is intended to operate in the first place. Anyone that tells you anything different is wrong. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.